Hello everybody, this is the Vikram. So, when Captain America The Winter Soldier came out, people were absolutely blown away by it. Sure, they did like, you know, the first movie, uh, the first Avenger, aka one of my favorite Marvel movies of all time, but we're getting slightly ahead of ourselves. But, you know, people liked it, sure, but when The Winter Soldier came out, people were absolutely blown away by it because it, they thought it was such a good, you know, update of the character, you know, dropping him into, you know, modern society from the 1940s. They thought that was absolutely fantastic. More so, it also was a better movie than, you know, the first one. I agree on the update thing. I thought that this was a fantastic update of the character Captain America, but I do not agree upon the statement that this should be better than uh, the first Avenger. The first Avenger is fantastic. This is very, very good. Slight difference. So why is it that this movie doesn't quite match up the awesomeness of the first one? I mean, I do prefer a spectacular war adventure rather than a, you know, ice cold uh, paranoia thriller from the 1970s. But I think it was a bold and actually kind of smart move to make this movie into an almost three days of the Condor like movie. They couldn't quite pull that off now did they but we shall see why that was shall we this is going to be a largely positive review of actually speaking the best standalone series of movies that marvel has ever done because if we're looking at the competition here thor has two good one very good and one fantastic movie iron man has one very good one bad and one decent movie Captain America has two awesome and one fantastic movie. But let's find out how good this movie is here with this is Captain America The Winter Soldier. Alongside Black Widow, Captain America is now working for S.H.I.E.L.D. under Nick Fury, doing you no know, jobs to try to stop the bad guys and stuff like that. But he is reluctant to trust you know, either of them because you know, Nick Fury is giving uh, Natasha orders to you know, do missions within you know, their missions that he knows that uh, um, Captain America is too squeaky clean to do. And you know, uh, Captain America is a little bit upset by that. We could have you know, done that. We didn't have to do you know, that. We didn't have to go that far and stuff like that. And he butts head a little bit with Nick Fury over this. And he thinks that the new idea from S.H.I.E.L.D., you know, with the jacked up helicarriers and stuff like that, is a bad idea. He says, you know, this is not, you know, freedom, this is fear, to which Nick Fury responds with the absolute killer line, we look upon the world as it is, not as we wished that it is. But um, even Nick Fury does have some reluctances, you know, regarding the helicarriers and stuff like that, and brings it up with the new head honcho of S.H.I.E.L.D., Alexander Pierce, played by Robert Redford. Shortly after he has done this, uh, he is attacked by some unknown assailant and also a masked villain with a metal arm, the Winter Soldier. And shortly after that, Nick Fury is killed. So Steve Rogers finds a dying Nick Fury in his apartment and Nick is basically telling Steve that you're going to have to uh, find out what is going on within S.H.I.E.L.D. There is something evil going on there and then he dies and then the Winter Soldier busts in and he's able to you know, catch his S.H.I.E.L.D. and stuff like that. And soon after that, uh, Steve Rogers become a marked man and, you know, is hunted by the S.H.I.E.L.D. as a traitor. And he and Black Widow escape together. Are they going to be able to figure out what is going on within S.H.I.E.L.D.? What is this evil that is growing? Who is the Winter Soldier? And what connection does he have to S.H.I.E.L.D.? What connection does he have to Fury and to Rogers himself? We shall soon find out. That is essentially what this movie is about. A guy on the run trying to clear his name while also figuring out what the bad guys are up to and finding out, you know, new exciting plot points. It is a very good idea and it is a very well executed movie. And as I said, this movie started off as such a fantastic Almost, you know, Three Days of the Condor style of a movie. And I like the fact that it was so scaled back. I love the car chases. Spectacular, yes, but not over the top. I love, you know, running around and outsmarting, uh, you know, the bad guys and stuff like that. And the fight sequences were great. And I loved this movie so, so much. And I also thought that Captain America and Black Widow made a great pairing together. And I thought that there were so many nice little moments in this movie. So many nice, small little characters that would become important later. And as I said, yes, this 
this is more of an action thriller set within a superhero setting rather than the war adventure uh, set inside of a superhero setting that was the first movie and I like that idea making the second movie different from the first and for a good 80% of the movie it worked gangbusters I thought it was so good when did it fail the ending because I was so opposed to the fact that this ended with a CGI monstrosity with epic fights and crashing helicarriers and stuff like that I was just no you didn't need to do that you could have made this to a more low-key exciting suspenseful and smart movie even though most of the movie did that, you know, the running around and the sneaking around and the Scooby-Doo reveal and stuff like that, but you didn't need to have this extremely spectacular big ending to the whole thing. I liked it just when they were running around in DC and hiding and, you know, blackmailing people and throwing people off buildings and stuff like that. That was great. It's something we haven't seen before. It was more boots on the ground rather than, you know, fights in the air. That was great. I didn't think that they needed that. The other problem this movie had was essentially the villains because it is not you know, unusual for Marvel movies throughout the years to be criticized for having lackluster villains. This one is no exception. We essentially have two villains in this movie. Both are you know, accompanied by a kind of twist, kind of. One of them we sh probably should see coming and one of them we saw coming a mile away, but that is a story for another time. I'm not going to spoil it because spoiling things is too precious for this world and I ain't gonna do it, even though it has almost been 10 years since the release of this movie, but I digress. Because when the second villain was revealed, I was like when I saw it the first time, oh no, now I know exactly what's gonna happen to that guy. Now, having seen this movie a couple of times since that, it doesn't affect me as much as it did, but at the moment when I saw it, I was like, oh. Now I know exactly what's gonna happen, and now, you know, you have taken a lot of the edge of this movie. But it isn't, you know, a big problem. This movie is still one very, very good uh, Marvel movie. It has spectacular action sequences. It has likable characters. It has likable side characters. It has fantastic heroes. We don't have that much time for the villains because, you know, we have to make our heroes cool and stuff like that. But uh, I digress. We have great suspense, great scope. We have pretty good acting. And on top of everything, I love the Scooby-Doo reveal. It's one of my favorite things ever. This movie also took place in that weird period when you were sitting there thinking, why shouldn't they call the Avengers? Why can't they call Hulk? Why can't they call Iron Man? Why can't they call, you know, somebody who can, you know, come and help them in this hour of need? And I wish that they could have had, you know, a better explanation than, no, we ain't calling the Avengers. Explain why please. There is probably some contrived reason why they can't call in the Avengers, but eh, I don't know. It was just something that made a couple of movies during this time a little bit, but why aren't they doing this, this and that? And that was a little bit... Uh. I'm sure that they have a legitimate, even though kind of contrived, uh, reason for not calling the Avengers, but uh, I digress, it's not that important to the rest of the movie. It is a really fun, really suspenseful, really spectacular uh, action thriller, which I really recommend people to see. It is not as good as the first one, and it is not as good as Civil War, but it is far better than most Marvel movies that has been made, including every single Marvel movie that has been made since uh, Avengers Endgame, except Guardians of the Galaxy 3. So. I do recommend this movie. I think this is a very, very good movie. It has tense to it, it has stakes to it, and it has a couple of really, really awesome sequences that I really love. Could it have been better with a smarter and less action oriented finale? I do believe so, because even though it was a spectacular finale, I have seen better before this and after this. But still, I think this is a very, very good Marvel movie, and if you have never seen this, do see it. I do have a fondness for these type of movies where, you know, uh, somebody's being chased and, you know, trying to figure out the mystery to the whole thing and at the same time being chased by the bad guys and trying to foil the bad guys' plan at the same time as, you know, dodging cops and stuff like that. Fantastic movies such, you know, The Fugitive and Shooter and most, you know, Mission Impossible movies. I really love them. Even underwhelming movies such as Taken 3 is still a better movie than it would have been without this type of a story. So it is an effective way of telling a story and this movie did it quite well in my opinion. Even though the last half of the third act of this movie is only very good instead of magical as, you know, the first part of this movie was, I can still give this movie a solid 86 point. This is a very fun, very spectacular, 
very dramatic action thriller. I love Captain America as a character, and he always seems to fit in whatever you know, scenario they want to put him in. Goofy, cool, voice of reason, or just your regular old Boy Scout, he always fits whatever they want him to do. It's weird. It is maybe one of the best casting decisions in the history of movie making. Chris Evans is so good in this one. Charlotte Johansson is so good in this one, and they're backed up by some pretty big names such as Robert Redford and Samuel L. Jackson. The whole thing is just a big reminder of, hey kids, do you remember when Marvel was actually awesome? This is a pretty damn good example of it. So I'll see you next time for well, so instead of reviewing, well, such and such. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much.